And so everything unfolds within the imagination of man, and that is God. So tonight, as you leave here, go out knowing you have the power and the right to become the man, to become the woman that you want to be, without hurting any person in this world. You don't need to hurt anyone to gain anything in this world. You go out and play your part fully. And let no one pull any rank, for all ranks are only states of consciousness. The king and the one who is amusing him, the court jester, are both played by the same being, and that being is unseen by the two masks, the mask of the king and the mask of the court jester. For behind the mask is God, and God is simply I am. So one plays the part of the court jester, and one plays the part of the king, and we honor the mask and bow before the king. And that court jester may be nearer to apostleship. Do not judge for appearances, as you're told. When they saw this giant of a man stand before him, <coughs> Samuel thought, well, certainly he is the Lord's chosen. For the Lord said to Samuel, go down to the house of Jesse, for I have chosen one of his sons to be king of Israel. And when the first son came in, he was a majestic creature. And Samuel said to himself, surely he is the Lord's choice. And the Lord said, I have rejected him. The Lord sees not what man sees. Man sees the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. Then he brought the second, then he brought the third, and finally he brought the last, which was David. And David was tending the flocks. Now this is all a story. But you must extract the meaning from that story. So he brings the little one in. He was just a youth. And as he came in, no one thought for one moment he would be the one. And the boy spoke to the prophet Samuel. Rise and anoint him. This is he. And in the midst of his brothers, Samuel anointed him with the holy oil. And then the Spirit of God came upon him mightily from that day forward. Never left him. Therefore he never lost the battle. The victorious one, Paul David. So in the end, he stands before you, for he played all the battles. You were the, key, you were the Lord of Lords with him, but you didn't know it. And he is the Father's only son. And then he stands before you, and he is your son. And then and then only do you know you are God the Father. You gain all the assurance that you need when you see David. For he is God's son, and he is your son, therefore you must be God. And that's the story. Now this being our last night, suppose we go into the silence and give you ample time for questions if you have any. Good. Harry, I didn't see this, but well, I could have used it an hour ago. <laughs> now, are there any questions, please? Yes, my dear. You carry with you your memory. Even though the body is now, well, those that I've seen, and I've seen so many, including my parents, the day that my mother died back in 1941. It was just about a month before Pearl Harbor. I was in New York City then. I just returned from Barbados where I spent three weeks with her. So I came back, I was in, sitting in my living room. The mother comes before me. And she was a girl, beautiful blonde, as she was, as a young woman, blonde, blue eyes. And mother is before me, sitting under an arbor. She was passionately fond of flowers and a beautiful garden. She's under this arbor, brushing her hair. But she wouldn't talk to me. And then I sat and I wrote my sister a letter saying, I've just seen mother. And mother is a most beautiful young woman of 20 years of age. But that was the very moment that my mother departed the world. But when I got my sister's letter that came back to tell me, that was the hour allowing the difference in time between New York and Barbados. And that was exactly when Mother closed her eye, and that was it. But she instantly appeared to me in New York City, 2,000 miles away. She was only 61 when she died. But I saw her at 20, and I saw Lawrence. He was about 21, 22. My father, same thing. Jack Butler, who was my secretary, 
when he dropped dead at the age of 50. When I met him eight months later, Jack was about 21, 22. So I can only tell you what I see. They all are restored. They aren't little babies. They're restored with intelligence, and they know who they are. They know who you are. And many of them don't even know that they died. Totally unaware of it. The majority don't know it, because they haven't died. Like Jack, when I said, well, Jack, you know, you died. I went to your funeral. So you're crazy. I am not, I die, but I'm not dead. I said, yes, you die, but you're not dead. Well, how, that doesn't make sense, does it? But, you know, there are states of consciousness in which visionary men are accounted madmen.